ADHD have another psychiatric condition. As you add psychiatric conditions to ADHD, you increase mortality rates, not morbidity rates. You increase mortality rates. And if you show up this afternoon, I'll show you that information. Um, I think for those people who look at you peculiar, it simply, remain, it, it simply means that they don't understand the complexity of what's going on. Uh, this is not their bailiwick. They don't see the patients. They don't know how to evaluate for ADHD. And so just have a conversation with them and walk away. Um, if you don't believe in ADHD, that's fine. There are still a lot of psychiatrists who say, this is just made up for the pharmaceutical industry. That's fine. I understand you fell asleep 30 years ago, just woke up, missed the explosion of academic research. Um, but if you don't believe in ADHD, that's fine. Would you send the patient to somebody who does so an accurate assessment can be made as to whether that's there or not? <clears throat> Which only means that everyone in this room is going to have more patients because you are the people who know what you're doing. In your experience, how often do adults and kids need to go above the FDA max of stimulants for a significant reduction of symptoms? Um, so if I pulled a number, it would be from the, the ORIS, methylphenidate adult uh, titration, which is about 30%. Now, I run a specialty clinic. People who see me are looking for a certain level of expertise. So I'm going to be the, the people who are refractory or not optimally responding, and I have more patients who are going to be on higher doses. In a clinical practice, I would probably guesstimate maybe 20% of your patients need to go beyond the FDA max, but again, not cavalierly. It's because they've gotten a benefit as you've moved up, there's no tolerance developing, and so you're going up higher and higher, monitoring vital signs to ensure that as you go up, you're not gonna run into hemodynamic problems, which is another issue with people who have comorbid ADHD and hypertension or cardiac issues, which is a conversation and presentation for another time. Um, the difference, though, in going higher and higher in your dose is you want to make sure the patient is responding as you go up on the dose and that you're not chasing tolerance. So there are some patients that will grow tolerant to doses and you keep increasing and increasing. At some point, you have to make the distinction, am I pursuing clinical legitimacy or am I now chasing a tolerance issue? And if that happens, you have to explain to the patient that they've developed a physiologic tolerance. Um, and at that point, you have to taper off or move to another preparation. In that, in, that, um, in that scenario, I would move to a different compound. So if they develop the tolerance to methylphenidate, go to amph uh, amphetamine uh, or vice versa, and then think about your non-stimulants as an adjunctive agent. So as you go higher on your stimulant medication, if you get to a dose at which you're growing concerned and you don't really want to go higher, but the patient is getting some response, not optimal, then think about adding a non-stimulant or an alpha-2 agonist. <clears throat>